Man. This game is one of the oldest and most recognized video games in existence, with many achievements to its name. When Pac-Man came to America in 1985, the original arcade version seemed so simple. Would you believe me then if I told you that in fact, Pac-Man can be seen as the dramatic story of a restless hero fighting armies of invaders, and that this story has a dark ending? Let's take a peek below the surface. For those of you out there unfamiliar with this fantastic game, here is a brief description. As the player, you control Pac-Man. Your mission? Eat as many dots, power pellets, and fruits as possible. As you roam the maze-like levels, you'll be chased by four enemies. Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. If Pac-Man runs into any of these enemies while vulnerable, you lose a life. If you run into the enemies right after eating a power pellet, on the other hand, you'll defeat them, eat them whole, and gain points. Though this only happens in the early levels, as later on, eating the power pellet only confuses the ghosts and doesn't make them eatable. And as soon as you eat 244 dots, you go on to the next level. Now that we have the basics out of the way, let's start to figure out what's going on here. In each level, the enemies have a stronghold in which Pac-Man cannot enter. When Pac-Man defeats an enemy, the eyes of the enemy rush back to the stronghold as quickly as possible, as if some essence was going back to be reincarnated. That seems odd, considering that Pac-Man just ate them. Speaking of which, the fact that Pac-Man defeats his enemies by eating them is also very strange. It could be symbolic, but perhaps the eating will make more sense, literally, as we figure out what's happening here. Another clue to consider is the fact that as soon as all of these dots are cleared from a level, the whole level flashes, causing the enemies to vanish and Pac-Man to move on to the next stage. Now this next idea might seem quite random, even out of the blue, but it serves as a good starting point for understanding the story. There is a certain type of white blood cell called a macrophage, which defeats its enemies the same way Pac-Man does, by eating them. If Pac-Man were a macrophage, a lot of the game's elements would be explained as analogies for what happens when someone gets an infection. Invading microorganisms swarm the host, triggering the host's immune system to inflame the infected tissue and send in a number of white blood cells, including macrophages. The macrophages engulf the invaders, trapping them and breaking them down. Once an area of the body is cleared of infection, the macrophages and other white blood cells, such as memory cells, make their way back into the bloodstream to keep searching for infections. Meanwhile, the inflammation in the previously infected area goes away. Similarly, the dots would represent various antigens, small proteins that the immune system doesn't recognize as being made in the body. By clearing out both the antigens and the actual invading organisms, the dots and the enemies, Pac-Man, the macrophage, would stop the infection and move on to other infected areas. There are several major holes to fill here. Even with the general idea of what's happening in each level taken care of, for example, what are the fruits? Well, it's hard to say, but since they only give points, not affecting any of the mechanics, they could just be another type of invading organism. After all, macrophages consume every type of microscopic invader. We could be a macrophage inside of someone that really likes fruit, and thus gets fruit stuff all inside of them, and then they stab themselves with a key. How about the power pellets? Is there some sort of chemical process that causes macrophages to aggressively target infectious agents? In fact, there are. You see, in order to keep all of the different immune system cells doing their jobs in the correct location at the correct time, certain immune system cells called T-cells release chemical signals called lymphokines. The lymphokines tell the macrophage exactly where to go and give an impression of where the target is. Next, we have a topic that raises several complicated questions. What's happening with Linky? Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. In this scenario, they're foreign invading microbes. So, is it possible to tell what kind? How could invading germs kill a macrophage? And perhaps most strangely, what is the stronghold they keep coming out of that Pac-Man cannot enter? First off, let's tackle the question of how infecting germs could kill a macrophage. There's actually a decent sized list of illnesses caused by microorganisms that can successfully stop the macrophages from consuming them. Some bacteria and viruses release protein that negate the effects of the digestive chemicals made by the macrophages. Some protozoans shed their outermost layer and slip into the main body of the macrophage. Other bacteria have a special, nigh-impenetrable shell that the macrophage can't break down. 
In every one of these cases, the macrophage is destroyed once the invader inside replicates enough to burst the macrophage's cell membrane, which just so happens to fit the way Pac-Man dies. In a way, by answering our first question, we've gotten hints towards the answers of the other two. The diseases that invade macrophages are the best candidates for the enemies. The fact that they can invade cells brings up another interesting point. Could the stronghold in each level be a mass of infected cells harboring copies of the enemies? Absolutely. This matches with the previously mentioned flashing of the level, which can represent inflamed tissue returning to normal. All the walls are the walls of blood vessels. With all that in mind, we now turn to figuring out what illnesses Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde are. And I do mean illnesses, since despite looking similar in basic shape, their behavior gives away the fact that the four enemies are very different. Let's start with the enemy with the most recognizable pattern, Clyde. Clyde pursues Pac-Man until Pac-Man gets within a certain distance away from Clyde, at which point Clyde turns around and runs to the bottom left corner of the screen. Despite this avoidance, if Clyde collides with Pac-Man on his way to the bottom left corner, Pac-Man loses a life. Perhaps this avoidance isn't a fear response per se, but rather a regrouping effort in a more comfortable environment. This behavior most closely matches the infectious pattern made by tuberculosis. Just as an aside, even though tuberculosis is typically thought of as a disease that stopped being relevant in the far past, as of 2009, approximately a third of the world's population is estimated to have tuberculosis bacterial infections. Initial tuberculosis infections almost exclusively target the lungs. However, reactivated and chronic tuberculosis infections spread throughout the body. Despite this, tuberculosis microbes attempt to migrate back to the lungs where they can reproduce most easily. Similarly, Clyde heads for the bottom left corner of the screen. Next, let's look at Inky, the enemy with the most confusing attack pattern. In the game, Inky uses both Blinky's and Pac-Man's position to figure out where to go next. Attacks on Pac-Man by Inky are usually either incidental or caused by both Blinky and Inky being in close proximity to Pac-Man. It's almost as if Blinky empowers Inky by being nearby. More on that later. From this generalized pattern of infection and the empowerment from being in proximity with Blinky, Inky is most likely a form of brucella. Brucella doesn't focus on infecting any particular tissue of the body, though it may be collected in the lymphatic system due to white blood cells carrying the bacteria to lymph nodes to be destroyed. And again, more on Blinky later. What of Pinky then? Pinky tries to ambush Pac-Man, targeting tiles which are four steps ahead of Pac-Man's current direction of movement. Due to this behavior, Pac-Man can inadvertently run into Pinky Yet, Pinky isn't necessarily chasing Pac-Man. Not directly, anyway. In this case, the best candidate for Pinky's identity is the protozoan which causes Chaga's disease. Since Chaga's protists passively invade the lymphatic system and blood, producing chemicals which allow them to easily invade and replicate within macrophages. But only when an uninfected macrophage happens to bump into the protist. It seems strange that all these admittedly unusual diseases have invaded the same individual. It's almost as if their immune system isn't working correctly. And that's exactly the problem. Whoever this game may be taking place in has, along with these three aforementioned diseases, another, much more serious condition. The one which Blinky represents. Blinky is the human immunodeficiency virus. Blinky's actions of doggedly pursuing Pac-Man directly at all times and enabling Inky to act more aggressively match the profile of HIV quite well. HIV, as is well known by now, directly attacks the immune system of whomever it infects. Along with that, a study on the relationship between brucella and HIV which took place in 2010 showed that those who are infected with HIV have 2.4 times the chance of developing a brucella infection compared to those who don't have HIV. This study also shows that in people with both diseases, there are far fewer healthy white blood cells than in people with just one or the other. HIV and brucella are more aggressive than if they are alone. Just like Blinky and Dinky. And now, we're almost done figuring out the details of the story of Pac-Man. There's only two more loose ends to figure out. What's going on when the eyes of the enemies head back to their stronghold? And what is the kill screen on level 256? It appears as if the stronghold is somehow sensing the enemy's defeat and sending out a new copy of the enemy to roam the maze. Could an infectious disease somehow sense microbes dying to send out more? 
shockingly, they can. In the past, infections were treated as if they were a massive group of individual invaders attacking a host, with no particular pattern of attack. More recently, though, a whole new field of study has opened up, focusing on the abilities of individual microorganisms to communicate with each other. This is a phenomenon called quorum sensing. It has been shown in observations of diseases that quorum sensing allows infections to fortify strongholds and coordinate waves of attack on the host. And finally, we look to what served as, for many players, the end of Pac-Man. Level 256. In the original arcade version, players who proved their metal by battling their way up to level 256 were in for a surprise. A bizarre split screen, one half normal, one half covered in a freakish matrix of corruption. Due to this corruption, a large number of the dots were wiped from the level, leaving only nine of them in the corrupted half of the screen. Because of this, it is impossible to collect the necessary 244 dots in the corrupted level, meaning the only choice left for the player is game over. The corruption of level 256, while unintentional on the game maker's part, also serves as another part of the story. Another terrible trend regarding the health of people who have HIV is the fact that a far higher percentage of them end up getting many types of cancer, most of which are fatal. This is due to not only the person's immune system being overtaxed by the chronic infection and unable to focus on destroying cancerous cells, but also the fact that the HIV can trigger cells to become cancerous when it invades them and starts manipulating the cell's DNA. The corruption on level 256 is a cancerous tumor. Too twisted and malformed to fix. Pac-Man, the macrophage, the immune system cell, having fought so desperately to defeat the four invading diseases, meets his match in this corruption and perishes. <coughs> leading not only to game over for him, but also the person he tried so hard to defend. And yet, there is hope. You see, in the original Pac-Man arcade machines, there was a special switch. This switch allowed the player to skip level 255, which allowed the game to write level 256 properly. Pac-Man can then defeat the enemies and move on back to level 1 where the game starts all over, though the enemies are faster now. In the past, many people fell victim to terrible diseases like tuberculosis, brucella, Chagas disease, and HIV. That's why scientists have worked so hard to find medicines and vaccines for these diseases. Those are like our real-life special switch. They are what gives our bodies and our macrophages a chance to fight back. Which is why, if you don't get your kids vaccinated, you are a cruel, cruel idiot. And that, my friends, is the story of Pac-Man. So until next time, stay awesome, and never stop using that noggin.